We're quickly approaching the year end. 2021 was frankly a whirlwind of uncertainties largely exacerbated by the pandemic. But even in the eye of the storm, life did in fact carry on. South Korea made a significant step in the space race and we look to a major election in 2022. To cover some highlights of the year, we looked through several news outlets and search engines' keywords and compiled our own list based on our coverage this year on Good Morning Seoul. To help us review 2021, we are joined by Professor Lee Hyun, Associate Dean and a Professor of Law at Handong International Law School. Thank you very much for joining us, Professor Yi, and happy holidays. Yes, happy holidays to you too. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, so there are major events that have been all throughout the year. And frankly, choosing the top five was a, a little bit of a process. Um, and you've done such a wonderful job narrowing down the most critical moments of the year. Uh, let's get started. Uh, of course, in 2021, the world experienced a supply chain crisis, a severely affected international trade. Uh, during the holidays, we see reports of people not being able to get gifts that they wanted, for example. How did all this unfold? And of course, I think much more importantly, what can we expect going forward into a brand new year? Right. Well, of course, you know, COVID hit and therefore, you know, all the supply chains were, were severely affected. So, you know, one of the things that uh, you see now in sort of modern production is just in time production. And so like a lot of companies like Sony and Samsung and Hyundai Motors, you know, they don't keep an inventory of, of products like mm. to, to just basically have on hand, as well as the stuff that they use to build those things. Mm. And so because of COVID, you know, there were a lot of uh, places in Southeast Asia, other places where you supply goods, where they were not uh, operating their factories. And so basically they ran out of inventory. Right. And so uh, when, when basically demand picked up again, uh, then people start to order more things as there sort of was a recovery. And then therefore all these companies were stuck because basically you had to ramp up production that takes time, mm. energy. And you, know, you saw those long lines on television where, you know, basically cargo ships were waiting to get into ports because it was such an overflow of, of goods coming in. And it was also about at, at, at a certain time, a, a critical moment, a, a, maybe a labor shortage too, that didn't help the situation. And then, like you said, I remember the Suez Canal being just backed up and, well, it was it, we felt kind of helpless as a consumer just watching from afar and ordering, for example, a new gaming machine, a console maybe, and just never being able to get it, get it right? Absolutely. I you know with my, even my own children were waiting for a game system to come in and then basically you're out of stock. And so you could not order anything. And so therefore, you know, now it's starting to pick up a little bit and people say it's going to get a little bit better. But people are predicting even next year will be uh, s s delays will still be in place because a lot of the system has been basically disrupted. And so it's going to take quite a bit of time to get this all settled. Mm, to basically catch up maybe with production. Um, if, let's say, for example, orders are backed up, that would mean that they would need to run the factories longer. They would need more manpower. But with the Omicron variant, wouldn't that be essentially very difficult? Yeah, I mean, I think this is going to be, like I said, a, a, a maybe a, a medium term issue because, mm -hmm. uh, as you were just referring to, because of the variants, uh, because we don't know exactly how this is going to all play out with respect to the uh, future. Uh, there's going to be delays uh, inevitably because of the number of people who can work. Mm -hmm. And basically, you know, the employment rates have been varying in various places around the world. And so because we're such an, in a global economy, we depend on countries from other places. And Korea, of course, has faced this issue with respect to diesel fuel in terms of uh, products that were sent in from China, particularly. Mm -hmm. And so because this is an interconnected world, we're going to have to depend on what happens in other places. You know, I, I said we're going to wrap up the year, but I keep asking you about what's going to happen next year. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but it's just, you know, as a, it's just even a, just a consumer perspective, not just a news person. I think I'm curious as to, you know, should we manage everyone's expectations, too, because when we turn over a new leaf, I think our expectation is it's going to be a brand new year. It's going to be a clean slate. But frankly, that didn't happen in 2021. And it seems likely that these same trends that we're talking about now will carry on into the new year, too. But doesn't mean life is coming to a full stop. In fact, I mean, there was a sense of hope ignited when we did launch our very own homegrown uh, spaceship, right? And Nuriho lifted off in October of this year, marking Korea's entry as a space power. Uh, 
you know, I've talked about this with several experts on my program, too, and we're a little bit far behind in the space race, but it's not just about coming up as number one or two. It is also important that we have this homegrown rocket. So let's go back and revisit that significance of that very accomplishment. Right. Well, you said, of course, homegrown, and that's important because, you know, because of various sorts of limitations, because of treaties, as well as sort of this international missile treaty regime that Korea is a part of, you know, basically, you know, the world is concerned about development of ballistic missile technology. And so a lot of the stuff that you can't export technology into other places because of the, the worry that it will cause, you know, of course, just destabilization in different places. But so with respect to Korea, then, uh, because there's such a great investment in, in this country with respect to developing this technology, uh, it was a big deal to have this liftoff. Uh, now, obviously, there were some glitches towards the end of, of that whole uh, liftoff itself. But the point is, is that, uh, you know, in order to be a space power, you really have to develop this own technology. And this goes to the questions of sort of uh, development of the actual missiles themselves and being to launch them and then also being able to launch a satellite essentially into mm. into orbit. And so with respect to that, you know, there's only a few countries around the world that actually have the capability to achieve that. And so be, Korea being at this particular stage, as you mentioned, sort of late in the game, yet uh, because Korea was able to do this, you know, they're in the picture now with mm. respect to being able to develop their own technology and then uh, with the hope of launching satellites eventually. And with those satellites, what do you suppose the next step is for South Korea? Well, you know, there's lots of different capabilities, obviously. I mean, communication satellites, mm -hmm. um, the satellites we use for GPS, obviously for defense and security concerns that Korea may have, uh, you know, space exploration too, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, of course, been a big topic in, in the last uh, couple of years and certainly sending people into space and then eventually to the moon or to other planets. And so, the, I mean, so that's basically the ceiling is, is very, very high with respect to Korea, uh, given where we are now. And of course, I think that the most impressive thing is because Korea really was a newcomer to this. Mm. Uh, the fact that it was able to develop its technologies to this point. Mm. And now, you know, basically, you know, the, 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 the sky is very blue, literally, for Korea <laughs> to be able to move forward on this. What a perfect metaphor. And the thing is, the Korean Meteorological Association gets a lot of flack for never getting the weather right or us being, you know, situated in, the pen in a peninsula where it's difficult for us to apparently predict the weather. Accurately, that is. Maybe the satellite could help alleviate that situation, too, don't you think? Right. I mean, I think that's one of the key things is to be able to predict the weather. You need to have a sense of so what's happening around the world. And so satellite technology obviously will improve that capability. And so I think we're looking forward to, to better and more accurate forecasts going forward. All right. Speaking of forecasts, March of 2022 is probably a pretty important month for South Koreans. The campaign to become Korea's next president kicked off this year, which will culminate in the election in March next year. What are some of the key issues that Korean voters are likely to be concerned about uh, beyond the pandemic that is, of course? Right. Well, of course, the economy is going to be a big deal. And that's, of course, related to COVID. But obviously, the economic situation and also, also employment for <coughs> excuse me, young people. Uh, and, you know, this, this relates to another issue that we'll probably cover later on about uh, real estate prices. But I mean, Basically, there was a sort of famous saying in the United States some years ago about, you know, when the when the Clinton campaign was campaigning against Bush, you know, it was all about it was about the economy. Right. It was sort of the economy stupid. I mean, basically, I mean, everything is about, you know, what happens here with respect to people's livelihoods. And so that's going to be, of course, a very big deal. And that goes to another question about like fairness mm. in society. Um, you know, that's a, a, a big question for people today is because of the, the gap that exists between people economically, mm -hmm. you know, people see the haves and then the have nots are in a situation where they see people then sort of using the system. Mm -hmm. And the question is, can the new president then come in with uh, sort of a, a, a momentum to sort of make Korea fairer <sighs> with respect to politics and, and law and economics? You know, Professor, I think you, you just said a mouthful there because fairness is something I think the next generation, I mean, we like to group them as MZ, which is a pretty wide range, but still, that's what they expect of Korean society moving forward. But it's such a complex issue. You know, how do we make that transition smoothly? How do we ensure that, you know, the young generation don't feel hopeless going into the job market, for example, or the real estate market? But these are, I think, issues that the presidential candidates are bringing up candidly. But 
eventually, I think what I look forward to are the debates where they look at the policies as to how to really get there. So these are some of the key points that we should be looking to before we cast our votes. <laughs> All right. You already mentioned it. Um, the housing prices soared in, in 2021 and there were clear, clear beneficiaries and clear, you know, a group of people who are left behind, especially in the capital city. What does that say about what's happening in Korea at large? Well, I think you know this is the I think the constant issue that we we face in Korea is regionalism and particularly you know the focus on the capital region, right? I mean, everyone wants to move there, everyone wants to live there, and obviously you know de- supply and demand. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's sort of the the, the very simple economic principles mm-hmm. there. So obviously, if the supply is low but the demand is high, you know there's going to be of course a lot of higher prices. But of course, another problem, of course, is in Korea, the Korean context. People see, you know, the ability to invest mm-hmm. in terms of diversifying investments in other places. You can diversify relatively easily, but in Korea, the, the easiest and simplest way to sort of invest is in real estate, right. because that's been a time-proven way of earning income over time. Mm-hmm. And so, because you have these confluence of factors, and because you know, young people, parents want to move to Seoul because of educational opportunities. You know, no one wants, you know, I live in Pohang, you know, so that's pretty far away. Right. Uh, and you don't see a lot of a lot of people living here. And so you see there's a constant issue of people moving into the capital region because they don't see the opportunities that exist. And so naturally, real estate prices are going to soar in that area, particularly, but also in general, the idea of investing in Korea is is in real estate primarily. And so that's you see this constant issue. And this is not an issue that's going to be solved, of course, anytime soon, given the, 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 the factors at play. You're absolutely right, because there are all these new regulations that were introduced in the Moon administration. And of course, it was well intended, but it just wasn't successful. That's the bottom line. And we don't have a silver bullet going into the new year. But I do suppose, because I, I think experts are chiming in, trying to solve it in the long term. Do you, do you see maybe if Seoul Lights were to decentralize and go to different cities across the country, maybe jobs can diversify in different cities? Days, do you think that's a probable means of solving this long term? Yeah, I mean, that, that's the great hope, right? That there would be a lot more people moving into other areas. But I mean, just the, you've seen the trends in the last what, 20, 30 years, right. 40 years or so. I mean, everyone wants to go to Seoul. And so and the government's been trying to, you know, Sejongshi, right? I mean, obviously they wanted to send people out abroad uh, to other, excuse me, other regions. Right. But, you know, people still go back. They still keep a house in Seoul and then they commute. Uh, so again, no silver bullet, but these got, I think these discussion points are worth mentioning. You said you're you're actually joining us from Pohang. Is that because of your job that took you there? Yes, you know I, I teach at a university here, Handong Global University. Right, and so right. uh, we I, we I, I teach here sort of in, in international law school. But so certainly yes, my, my job has taken me here, and I you know I've chosen to live live in Pohang. I think it's great. I think the weather's <laughs> great here. The air's clean. I mean, that's a big plug to live in Pohang. <laughs> All right. Who knew that you would be a spokesperson for Park City? The thing is, I mean, there are cities that are so beautiful outside of Seoul, too. If if I had an option to work outside, I, I would take it in a heartbeat, too. But again, it's about these long term goals. And as you said, maybe it's a little bit too idealistic, but we do have to have these conversations simultaneously. All right. We talked about the housing prices soaring in 2021. Let's look at our last keyword for the day. Throughout the year 2021, there were debates in Korea about whether or how to amend taxes on cryptocurrencies. Now, this is kind of a major keyword. Um, People are looking to, as you said, maybe diversify portfolio uh, if they had money and borrowing money was cheaper this year. That helps a great deal. What are the concerns that are being raised around cryptocurrency and maybe the further taxation of earnings from it? Right. This sort of relates to our previous discussion about actually about real estate because of investments. Because younger people today, <clears throat> I think, are really interested in in this particular area, cryptocurrency. Uh, I think Korea is particularly very poised to to be really involved in this, mm-hmm. and Korea has really taken off in terms of you know particularly stuff online, making payments online. Uh, Korea has been doing this for quite some time, uh, but you know people were really I think freaking out because uh, you know the the minister of finance as well as the current government said that there will be twenty percent tax mm-hmm. uh, instituted by uh, next year, the first of this of next year. And so because this is an election year, uh, you know, people are very you know, concerned about the young people and their voting uh, habits. 
And so very, because the young people have been investing in cryptocurrencies, you know, there's a lot of, of I guess, uh, unsettled feelings of, from the younger generation because they've been, they've been really involved in this particular area as opposed to other areas of finance. Mm -hmm. And so they don't want to see this tax imposed. And so the government has hedged a little bit. I think other people have, in the campaigns, have hedged on this mm -hmm. and said that maybe we'll delay it for a year and we'll, we'll further study this issue. And then once we figure out the definition for cryptocurrencies, then we'll be able to, to actually tax it appropriately. Appropriately. And you're, I think you raise a good point. I mean, with an important election around the corner, I think votes are, are, are a first more priority. But also it's important to address a fundamental issue as to why young people are, are investing in something like cryptocurrency that's a less proven record than, as you said, the real estate market. It's it's as if the younger generation, again, it's that sense of hope, right? If there is a beacon of hope in front of you and it seems to be the golden opportunity led by you know massive powers like Elon Musk saying, yes, this is the future. And so that does sway us left and right. But don't you think taxing immensely on something like cryptocurrency even in the, you know a year delayed form it goes against the idea of you know decentralizing which is kind of the basis of blockchain technology right right i mean i think this is the the, the one of the key issues so going forward is how do you then deal with this new technology i mean this is governments are always pretty late and law is pretty late to the game when it comes to developing new technologies and so People don't, frankly, I don't really understand, you know, how this all operates and works. And so the governments usually are uh, take a knee-jerk reaction when it comes to a lot of these kinds of things. And so, uh, you know, we'll see. I mean, I, after a year, we'll see what happens if the mood changes. But you know, the tax rates generally have to be looked at generally in terms of particularly giving people some relief. Right. I think going forward and into the future. All right, uh, Professor Lee, we're just about ready to wrap things up, but uh, because it is the holidays, after all, I do have to ask you, going into the new year, whether it's personal or professional, what are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to getting <laughs> back to normal and getting my students back in the classroom. I mean, in a, in a regular fashion and sitting and getting my kids to school in a, in a regular way. So hopefully, you know, I know we talk about new normals, but I really would like to get back to, to what we were doing in person. Uh, it, it was a tough, you know, teaching your students behind a screen. Oh, it was horrible. I mean, I mean, basically, we, we had the benefit of being uh, here. And so we had less restrictions overall. But yeah, obviously, you know, you have the, the, the situation where you have to teach online. And so uh, that was a real bummer for, for the past year. All right. Here's to hoping that next year comes with a little bit more alleviation, a little bit more hope. Thank you very much for an insightful conversation. We'll speak to you again soon. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.